I'm CK, and tonight we've got another kit from Geek Fun. If they keep making them, I'll keep building them. Uh, small soldering kit, soldering practice kit. Uh, I'm not sure really what it does. Geek Fun 60 second DIY red LED. So it's probably a timer with some red LEDs and some interesting soldering and maybe some good instruction along the way. We'll take a look at it. Hope you enjoy the video. Here's the bag. And as you know, I've, if you've looked at my channel at all, I've made a lot of Geek Fun kits. And I'll continue to because I find them to be pretty good quality and good learning tools. So let's open this one up. My way, which is by just cutting things apart. Let's see what we got. We've got a somewhat typical for them instruction sheet which is usually it's short but it's good so it's a one minute timer April 4th 2018 revision one and a nice little parts list then as again as typical good pictures all the way along showing you exactly how to put things together which is really nice. They don't go overboard, but they're comprehensive and you can see what's going on. And then on the back, they do what they often do and include a full schematic, which is great because again, it's a relatively simple kit, but once you get done, you can play with it, make it a timer, and then you can go through and look at the chips. Here's a, a triple five timer and then a couple of counters. This is a CD4 uh, 4017 and this is a 4017. Are there two of them? Huh, that's interesting. Uh, that were our decade counters to actually light up the LEDs as the thing counts across, I'm assuming. I think that's what's going to be happening. Uh, and then power and your stop start and all that and a little buzzer speaker and a couple of transistors so again a straightforward well documented and good exploring kit so that seems kind of fun now let's see what parts it comes with I get the circuit board out and this circuit board is actually better quality, and it's their EQ Quick Kit brand, uh, which is under GeekFun, I believe. And this is a better quality circuit board than some of them. It's all through hole plated, which is really nice. All the components have their values listed on the circuit board, which is nice. And there's there's Oh, my, oh golly gosh, there's 60 red LEDs. So that'll be a lot of soldering, won't it? Good to get practice with it. USB powered. Then we've got the components. Let's see, we've got resistors here first. Not too many. So instead of resistor time today, we'll have red LED time. Let's dump all these out. Let's see what we got. Okay, we've got the counters here that are somewhat interlocked. The buzzer, these are ubiquitous in the electronics industry. The 555, and then this is a this is the 555, and it's from I don't know who it's from. The prefix is NE National Electronics, just random. The logo isn't one I recognize. Same with this counter, that logo, logo I don't recognize. Little power supply plug. 
a nice old big 220 microfarad electrolytic, another smaller electrolytic, some switches, transistors, and I'm actually going to take all the red LEDs and put them in their own bin because they're in the way. I'm gonna, I'll speed through playback on this as I sort these LEDs out. You don't need to see that. Okay, LEDs sorted out. Let's see what else we have in here. One disc cap, two disc caps, a diode, some momentary press switches. Actually, that's not clicking, is it? There it goes. Two of those, then a more permanent on off type switch and there are actually two of them. I don't know why there's two of them but we'll fi find out along the way. Now one thing you don't see, two things I don't see. First, they didn't include uh, a little cap for the switches. That's fine. The other thing they didn't include is there aren't sockets for the ICs will be directly soldering those. Now one thing it's always fun to check on when you start out is take a look at the LEDs, see what they look like. And I'll show you how to do that if you haven't seen this before. If you want to check an LED, see what color it might be, if it's a transparent or clear one or uh, looks white or if you just want to verify that it works, take your meter and go into continu continuity mode, which is the mode where when you have continuity, it beeps. What that's doing is that's sending a small amount of current through the meter leads so I can put my positive side of my meter lead on the long leg, put the negative side on, and there the LED lights up. Uh, I sometimes do this with kits to check the LEDs because you can get some bad ones and I go through the LEDs just to make sure they light up. But I'm not going to do that for all 60 of these. So that's it. Relatively straightforward. Just a bunch of soldering to do, which is good practice. I'll get the soldering iron heated up and we'll get this thing underway. So we're going to start by putting all the resistors and the diodes on the board. So we'll just put all the 10Ks on and the first thing we do when we approach it and say, okay, we've got uh, a new kit. How did the spacing come out? Okay, so the spacing on the resistors is relatively tight so we want to bend the leads right at the body of the resistor instead of leaving anything an overhang or shoulder whatever you want to call it you want these tight against the body so I'm gonna speed up playback as I put all these resistors in because there's not a lot more to talk about than what I've already talked about enjoy resistor time That's all the resistors, not too many of them. Now I'll put the diode on. This is a 4148 glass body. And you can see the little polarity stripe there. The cathode is black. And on the board, uh, where did it go? I saw it just a second ago. Here it is. The diode symbol is really clear. This black stripe on the diode goes right where the white stripe is on the circuit board. And step two is install the four S8050 triode tubes to Q1 through Q4. So what they are calling triode tubes is trans what we call transistors, because this is not neither a triode nor a tube. This is a triode. This is a transistor. 
while they work somewhat similarly, they are definitely not the same. The, these are inline, so you're not bending one leg back or forward, and it's very clear which end the flat side goes on. And I'm just double checking because even though I was careful, I want to make sure I didn't bridge anything, and I did not. And now we'll put all the switches on. I think we're putting all... no, I'm sorry. Now we're going to put the uh, disc caps and the electrolytic caps on. The disc caps, we've got two 104s, two 104s which are uh, 0 0.01 uh, microfarad. They're typically, and in this case very much so, are very close to the chips. Now we'll do the big microfarad, I mean the big caps. This is the 220 microfarad and as you can see it's identified three different ways. There's a plus symbol, a square pad for the plus side, and a shaded area for the negative side. So the long lead is positive, the short lead with the stripe on the side of the barrel is negative. So very hard to make a mistake on this on these which is nice. I have, I will freely admit, I've gotten some circuit boards where I've stared in befuddlement at the symbols on the circuit board trying to say or saying to myself, I, I just don't know which is positive and which is negative. Which can be very frustrating. Geek fun does not leave you frustrated in that. You know exactly where things go. And I appreciate that. For a beginner, that's really important. The key thing besides the two main purposes are of course learning and uh, developing soldering skills, but to do that one thing you have to do when you're designing a kit for anybody who's thinking about ever designing a kit or sharing an electronics kit or idea that they've developed is you never want your assembler, your do-it-yourselfer, to be confused. You never want them looking at the board saying, I'm not sure what to do. It's really easy to be clear Now, these two switches here, these are the push and hold switches, one for power, one for pause. If you look on the circuit board itself, it's got a little notch here and here. And on the component itself, there's a little indented notch here. So that's what you match up to get them in, uh, positioned correctly. Now for this, it's a little loose, so I'm going to rest it on my pinky finger on the back here and take my solder. And solder one leg down. Let it cool. And take a look to make sure I got it all flat. And I did. And we'll do that for the other one also. If you're not comfortable or not uh, haven't done enough soldering to feel confident in doing what I'm doing by fumbling is what I'm doing right now, by holding it with your finger on the board like this two other options and I'll talk about them a little bit when we get to the ICs. But as you can see on this one, it's very tilted. I wasn't level, I was holding it sideways, but all you need to do is push on it, heat that solder leg up again, that single leg that you did, and now it's sitting all flat. 
I'm going to solder these legs down while I'm here. Now we'll go ahead and put the push buttons on. Start and stop momentary push buttons. The other thing I'm going to do is make sure that's out. Now these just clip in. They can only go in one way. Well, actually that's not true. Uh, they can go in this way or this way. It doesn't matter which. But you can't uh, because of the way the width is more than the height, you can't get them wrong. Now these have little bends in the legs so they lock in to the holes so you don't have to worry about them flopping out. So I won't solder them quite yet. I'm going to solder the buzzer on and the buzzer is also polarized and as you can see on the little protective paper plus sign and there's a plus sign on the circuit board right there you just match those up. Now I'll do that buzzer and the switch legs. Okay now we're gonna do the ICs. So we've got the two uh, 4017's 4069 and the 555 timer. Now I usually uh, press the legs against the side of my workbench to get them straighter, but I wanted to check this to make sure if I had to, and I do. So just a little push against the circuit, the side of my workbench to push the legs in a little bit and get them a little, actually I pushed that too far. So I'll pull it back a little notch on the IC at one end, notch on the circuit board, and I'm actually going to use some tweezers to put this in because that cap is kind of in the way. Now I can do the same thing I did before and hold that with my thumb, but another way you can do it is get some locking tweezers which I strongly recommend you have a couple of pair sets of these around and you reach in and that's not quite long enough so I'll get my longer ones and you reach in and you lock it down on the board like that and you can get at the pins and nothing's going anywhere so I'll tack one I'll solder one leg to hold it in place And then we'll do the other chips. And we'll solder the rest of those pins in a bit. Now if you don't have locking tweezers and you don't want to rest them against your fingers, here's one other idea you can use, which you could probably have the appropriate thing to do this. You can also take piece of masking tape, seven day tape, painter's tape, whatever you call it, and you can tape it down. And that also won't move while you solder a leg or two. And of course it pulls right off without any issues at all. So that's three different ways you can hold components that need to be held in place before you get a couple of pins or leads soldered. Choose whichever works for you based on your preference and tools you have available to you. Okay, I'm going to quickly solder all these pins. That's all the ICs. Now we're going to do the power supply. And I just realized right here in the center, D61. So there's 61 LEDs, not 60. Okay, they did this to me. Uh, they did this to me again. Uh, Kickfun's getting a little cheap on the power connector. So the power connector has 
three pins, three pins, and you'll see here there are two solder pads. Uh, in the past, these connectors have come with two dummy leads here to provide a little support. Uh, they've stopped shipping, or the last few kits from them that have one of these that I've done, uh, they haven't used a connector that actually has the support legs, uh, which from a electrical standpoint doesn't matter, but from a standpoint of if you were pulling the power in and out, power cord in and out, reasonably frequently, that would over time weaken these leads and it would probably bust at some point. But again, in this case, you probably don't have to worry about that. Now, they also have two leads, so you could run your own battery power in there, uh, 5 volt, uh, or put a power supply in it, or whatever you want to do. I'm not going to do that because I'll use the USB power. Next will be all the LEDs, so let me pause for a second. Now the fun part. 61 LEDs going in. Now they are, he wants the author of the kit wants to make sure you know that the long lead goes in to the square pad and you can also see the cathode line here for the short lead negative side and it's consistent all the way along so I'll put I'm gonna put all the LEDs on and then solder them and when you're undertaking a task like this the main problem or the main thing you have to watch out for in yourself is when you're doing installing 61 of the same components at one time you can zone out and get it wrong on one or two if you're not just focused. So just be careful as you put them all in. Make sure you've got the polarity right on each LED. Don't go so fast that you get sloppy or don't mentally zone out so you're not noticing what you're doing. Both things are very possible when you're doing 60 LEDs. In fact, I will probably not do all 60 at once. I'll do 10, 15 at a time because I know I am as subject to getting mentally fatigued by doing repetitive tasks as anyone. So there's not much to say here besides making sure you get the polarity right. You could, uh, the other thing you can choose to do, and I'll do it for one, is you may want to, if you're really doing a good finished piece of work, as you can see that LED, hopefully you can see that LED I just soldered is a little up. So again, I soldered one leg, I'm going to push on the LED, heat that leg again, and it goes very flat to the board, and it's very perpendicular and going to be pretty. Uh, I may not do that the whole time because I don't care whether it's pretty or not, this is for me. So that's what we're going to be doing for the next little bit. This will be LED installing time, and I won't have any commentary, and I'll speed up the playback. And there we are, all soldered up. Now, before I do anything further, first, there are four extra LEDs. Uh, they often include extra LEDs in the packaging. Now, the first thing I'm going to, or next thing I'm going to do is I'm, there's so many solder connections that I'm going to look on the back with the help of an index card 
and look at each solder connection to make sure I've actually soldered them and none of them are bridged. I always surprise myself when I find that I haven't soldered something after all these decades. Now we're going to give it a try. Let me turn the overhead light off a little bit. The power is off. This, Unfortunately, this cord is not as long as I would like, but it'll work. Put power in, power on, and we've got the center one blinking, the 60 minute one working. If I hit pause, it stops flashing. Oh, let me take the tape off the buzzer. Now I'll take it off pause and I'll go start, 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 there it goes. And at this point we see were any of the LEDs bad or did I solder any of them in backwards? I am not actually timing this. Let me get my phone out if I can get it out in time to be at the 30 second mark. And of course Face ID doesn't work with my visor. We'll start it at the 45 second part. Okay, 45 seconds should be 15 seconds before it hits the end. Just perfect. And the poor little buzzer sounds very sad. So now it's paused. That's what I had wrong. Out is paused. In is unpaused. And then we can start it again. Hit the stop and it resets. Start it again. Stop and reset it. And that's what it is. It's a fun little unit. And as you can see, there's some holes here so you could mount it on something. Uh, it's a good unit. Again, the instructions are really clear. There's a good schematic. So now that you've got it together, you can look at it and see what's going on throughout the circuit. And it's a little useful if you want a nice little 60 second timer. Another good one from Geek Fun. Hope you enjoyed the video.